Thank you. Um, I know some of you may have to leave right now, but we do have some time for some questions and um, a Q&A. And you may have some thoughts yourselves out here. I think we have a microphone ready to go. So um, I will be happy if you just raise your hand and uh, we'll take a question. Let's see, anybody raising their hand? No questions? <laughs> Amazing. There's a gentleman. Yes, you have a question, sir? Okay. Can we get a microphone now? Okay. Yes. Yes, both brothers were involved in SNCC. Uh, H. Rap Brown succeeded Stokely Carmichael as chairperson of SNCC. Were you involved in SNCC? Uh, yes, I was. As a matter of fact, I knew both your brothers very well. And your name is? Amani. What is it? Amani. I'm sure we have a lot of stories right here. A lot of stories. One other question. I think there's a gentleman on the panel who did Freedom Rides. Yes. Mr. Charles? Yes, that's me. Where did you participate? What did you say? Where did you participate? Uh, in Biloxi, Mississippi. That's where we got locked up. Let me tell you a story. I knew James Farmer. And he once sent me on a task from New York to take local bus, this is in December of 1960, to take a local bus from Baltimore to Washington, just to indicate where black folks stood to get the bus, where they had to go to the bathrooms, et cetera. I had no clue what that was about. I was on my way back to college in North Carolina. I didn't know until later that that was the beginning phase of the Freedom Rides, which initially were thought to, they thought they would start in Baltimore. As you know, they didn't. They started in Washington. But here's a participant who didn't know he's a participant. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, is there someone else who might have a question or a thought? Yes, ma'am. No, I'm actually a student at Coppin State University, senior that's graduating, and one of the panel members actually gave me my oomph at the age of 38 to go back to college, and that's Mr. Robert Houston, who taught me, Felicia, Lisa, <laughs> who taught me to always fulfill my dreams, no matter what. Aww. This is wonderful. Wherever we've been, there have been reunions like you wouldn't believe. We were at the Maryland Historical Society the other night, and a gentleman in the audience sang with Mr. Billy as one of the doo-wop group in his doo with the honey boys. 40 plus years ago. Amazing. Um, yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, is there another person here who would like to share? Because we will um, say adieu if not. Um, we do absolutely. Oh, we have a hand. Yes, thank you. Also, too, you know the exhibition for all the world to see is right next door. So um, if you have time, please, please go see it, and it will tell the rest of the story very graphically. 
Hi, thank you. Uh, my name is Rosalind, and I grew up in South Carolina and North Carolina, and I've been in Baltimore for about 10 years now. And I have a comment and a question. Um, my first comment, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you for everything that you've done for us to be in the position that we are today. I think so many young people don't realize everything that you all went through and they sort of, we sort of take it for granted. And as I was sitting there listening to your story, just reminded me, wow, you went through so much for us to have it so easy and to sometimes take that ease for granted that we have. So I work with a lot of young people in Baltimore City and high schools and stuff, and I'm gonna take your messages to them and hopefully um, encourage them to just continue to do the best they can. Uh, my question was for the, the gentleman who talked about being with the Freedom Riders and then Malcolm X, and I wondered if you were able to combine the two ideas of, of nonviolence and then Malcolm X, you know, by any means necessary, and do you think one was more appropriate than the other, one helped more than the other, as far as Malcolm's message versus the nonviolent passive resistance message? Well, to be honest with you, uh, I uh, started being nonviolent first. As I said in my speech, when I saw what was happening, I wanted to move Mississippi off the face of the man, to be honest with you. It, it, it was a profound, profound feeling in my heart. After meeting the bathroom and uh, seeing what he was talking about, listening to what he was talking about, and associated with him after that, I decided that the best thing to do was integrate, as we were doing with, with uh, Dr. Martin King, but do as Martha was saying, support yourself. Get our own businesses. Train our kids to be more responsible and to be proper citizens of the United States. Could I say something to you? You were talking about children and, and uh, not knowing. There is a wonderful children's book for uh, older high school age students uh, by Amy Nathan entitled Round and Round Together. And she gives a wonderful description of the great work that the Morgan State students did in, in uh, uh, lunch counter sittings and so forth and how they, they really sparked the so much of what went on here in Baltimore. And Round and Round Together by Amy Nathan, it's a wonderful book. And uh, when you said that, Lou, um, it reminds me of our last, and next and last performance of this program is at the Enoch Pratt Free Library, the main branch, uh, Saturday, February 23rd at two o'clock, and Miss Amy Nathan has said she's going to be there. So there's some very special things that have been um, happening and uh, that's how I first met Lou, through that book, because Lou was interviewed for that and book. Amy, Amy grew up here in Baltimore. Yes. Yeah. I'm not sure who could answer this question, but how were, was this group of people chosen to do this together? That's a great question. Uh, what happened was um, we, um, knew that we had a difficult task to find extraordinary people and we went to one of the sources we did was the Beacon newspaper. Do you know the Beacon? It's a free monthly publishing a publish, publication and uh, for seniors and uh, we put an ad there. We did it through locally, word of mouth, recommendation. So, excuse me? Rec oh, in Baltimore City, Rex and Park, senior division. We worked over at Drude Hill Park, which by the way, for those who don't know, was segregated up until like the, um, around the mid 50s. And some very historical things happened there. But um, even though it was a public park. Yes. I actually have a question for the organizers of, um, of this project um, that was sort of inspired by this other lady's um, comment. Would you, um, share with us where videos or audio of, of this program will be made available afterwards? Are you a plant in the audience? No, <laughs> that's a great, great question. I'll let that, uh, my friend and 
partner here, Sandra Abbott, tell you all about that. Thanks, Emily, my dear neighbor. <laughs> um, yes, we are doing a digital storytelling project. If you're not familiar with digital stories, basically it's storytelling, but online with visuals as well. So we're gonna have recordings of the stories that you heard here and more, and it's an ongoing project that the center is doing. And students here at the university will be digitizing the images to the stories. So what we've done is we've worked with the participants to, over the past few months, to scan images, photographs of theirs, uh, from you know historical photographs to um, newspaper articles, take pictures of other artifacts that they brought in, and take pictures of them currently. And they'll be um, put into a, like a slideshow with some video and that kind of thing. And most of the stories are kept fairly short. They're about two to four minutes long. And you can find them in three places. To begin with, we have two posted already that we started with in a pilot project two years ago. And it's at foralltheworldtohear.org. And this is in the program that you have today, so you don't have to remember that, okay? Um, and that's the first place that you can go. We'll also have continuing links to stories that we're doing with the, with the uh, participants in this program there, but also at, universe, at um, UMBC's digital storytelling site, which is um, umbc.edu forward slash stories, also in your program, and the link is on the For All the World to See org, um, sorry, For All the World to Hear org site. And the third place that we'll have them eventually, which is even further outreach, is through iTunes U. And iTunes uh, U has a special UMBC page with a lot of storytelling already up there through the efforts of, uh, of other departments here, uh, including the New Media Center at UMBC. Does that answer your question? <laughs> yes, and we'll be publishing written stories as well that you've heard here today. A lot of these stories, sorry? Yes, yes, because there, we couldn't put it all in. We would have been here all day. These people are very rich lives and very great stories that we had to edit out along the way, but we want to make sure we get the word out. So they'll all be on there, written, digital, video, um, maybe some audio clips as well. And that's uh, at the foralltheworldhere.org, which is in your programs. And I guess we'll, we'll have time for maybe one more question, if there's one more, and then I want to send you all over to see the exhibition in the gallery afterwards. <laughs> Yes, sir. I was busy doing my survey, so probably you've already answered this question. I'm a retired elementary teacher, so I'm always interested in knowing if this information has reached that level of children who need to hear it. That's a good question, um, for sure. We have been bringing students into the into uh, the pro performances. We felt that for some of the littler, younger students, some of it might have been too mature. Um, and so we, you know, we referenced that perhaps middle school and older. But certainly that information, just as Sandra said, is online. Yes, and a lot of um, elementary school or high schools even, uh, they have a digital access now online, but sometimes there are firewalls, but that's why we're, we're partnering, or we're going on the um, iTunes U spot, because that's free and everybody can access it in schools. There's a lot of educational resources there already, so that's how we're going to meet you know, the larger uh, population of K through 12, but also um, through the grant money that we've received. We also got uh, two Baltimore City elementary uh, middle schools and one high school from the county to the performance when we did this back in December down at Reginald Lewis Museum. I want to thank you all. Yes, oh, of course, Ms. Janice. Um, also, you may have some surveys today, and uh, we encourage you for them because we wouldn't be here without the Maryland Humanities Council, so if you would share those. Um, write on those uh, surveys and leave them for Sandra. Uh, we'd appreciate it. And now, no, that's okay, Janice. The gentleman who asked about younger children, uh, oh, through the years, we, my husband, Woody, and myself, we have gone to churches with small children there and talked about the things we were in, the Freedom Rides and um, Peace Corps and things like that. In fact, we've been invited already to four different places where young children are schools as well as churches and tell the story. And the kids ask nice questions. 
I know we've been getting more and more opportunities to um, come and speak at various places, so this will have a life on. And yesterday, didn't you speak at, um, uh, Derek, where were you speaking, in Howard County? Community Howard County Community College. And Derek and, and Robert, uh, we're going to be um, on Monday at Johns Hopkins Hospital uh, uh, with the people from the marketing department. They're very interested in this project. Isn't that interesting? I have to say something about this program. I've heard about it through my neighbors, the Billings, and I am really, really happy that my senior group could be here today. Right. We have enjoyed it thoroughly. And when I get home, I think I'm going to give Mr. Billy an Oscar, because he really did a mammoth job. Right. Okay. Well, thank you. If you want to uh, continue the conversation, maybe uh, just casually, we welcome that. But right now, we're going to say thank you so much for being here. We, it was our honor. Thank you. And thank you to my wonderful cast.